On today's show, the story of a boot. An outdoor tale as old as the craft. Watches Wisconsin workers craft Thoroughgood flyway boots. People are passionate about outdoor equipment. Get this. Americans spend more than $20 billion a year on gear. But no one ever really sees how their stuff gets made. Well, that's where we come in. Each week, we throw open the factory doors and give you a behind the scenes look at how your favorite gear is made. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Border View Lodge. Hunting comes with unpredictability, especially in places where weather turns in a blink. Good boots keep hunters on track and in the field, even in wet and sometimes wicked weather. Which is why we've come to the central Wisconsin town of Marshfield, home to an iconic outdoor brand. You know, the Weinbrenner Shoe Company has been making shoes continuously in the state of Wisconsin since 1892. And when you start to think of you know, the iconic American companies, Ford, Chevy, Harley Davidson, we're older than all of them. We made shoes for the military effort in World War I. We made shoes in World War II. We've made shoes for a lot of different entities over the years. Today, we want to see how Thoroughgood's flyway boots come to life. It's really nice upland game, bird boot, pheasant boot. It's fully waterproof now. It's got a booty lining, Goodyear well construction, lightweight, and the Briar Pit Stop leather. A legacy boot. The flyway boot, it's an original pattern that we had from the 1950s. And the flyway is originally designed for the outdoor industry. Now Thoroughgood crafts these hunting boots as fast as workers can get them out the door. The entire process starts here, where leather comes into the facility every single day. It's stacked on these horses, they're called, and it's cow leather with these crazy names like Trail Crazy Horse, Tobacco, and the leather we're using, Briar Pit Stop. This is enough right here for about 80 to 85 pairs of boots. Sam Happy loads carts. She follows a sort of daily recipe sheet for each order. So it's interesting, you know the raw sock leather, they send all the chunks out actually to the Amish all over the country and they do all the sewing. So when it comes back and the boot starts production, it looks like this. So I have someone I want you to meet. That's Mary Jo and you are part of the flanging team, is that right? Yes. So what are you guys working on? We're doing booties and forming the heel. Mary Jo Dagliano starts on the booty. Temperature heats it up, the counter that I put in here, and then when I put it on here, it forms the heel. Old school machines help her complete the process in just 30 seconds. I usually do 35 cases all day. That's regular work and booties. Mary Jo then wheels her work to the next station. Darren Likeness now picks up the process. This guy works fast. Usually if I'm with somebody, we can get about 25 cases done a day. Darren adds a last to each booty. That's the plastic mold that helps shape and size each boot, sort of the boot's DNA. Then he wheels to his next stop. This is called 7100. It's an adhesive. It'll hold the insole on. Darren paints on the very sticky concoction. All right, let's see. Clean. Yeah. He paints on an adhesive and then lets them sit for a bit. Oh, and he also preps the insoles. Yeah, we just got this. Speeds up the process. We used to do it by hand. Sticky business. Ha ha ha. Those sit while Darren adjusts this simple tool. This here is our booty stretcher. It pulls this booty nice and flat. I press this on here. Then I send it over to Rick here and he assembles them. Rick Hoffman, one of Thoroughgood's staples. 17 years. You're kidding me. Nope. You like it here? Oh, yeah. 
a fun so job. I've been doing this for the whole time, too. Yep, the same job. Rick appreciates his role. Listen why. See, my brother-in-law used to be in the Army. He's actually got a pair that I made because I put my initial inside the lining of the boot. One of the reasons you'll hear most Thoroughgood employees talk about that little tag on the side. Very important. I'd rather have anything made in the USA than anything made overseas. Rick gets to work on the back of each boot. This is a latex cement that I squared into the heel of the boot just to keep the booty and the upper together. It'll seal it. Then he lines up the two just right. Now, a little metal in the mix. Then I put like three, four staples right along the edge. Those staples will hold these parts in place for now. Let's take a break while the glue dries. But up next, fast hands make fast work of flyway boots. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Borderview Lodge, Ice Castle Fish Houses, Aquarius Home Services, Car Arms, and by Keystone Light. Keystone Light, always smooth, celebrate responsibly. This is way better. Yeah. You see that? Thorough Goods R&D team never felt compelled to reinvent the wheel. After all, their legacy boots still stand after a long test of time. Over in production, Rick Hoffman wraps up the heel work and the flyway boots move on. This part of the shoe is where we seam and then we form the mock to all even. Jessica McCarty helps flyways take shape, <laughs> literally. And then we use the glue on the inside as well. So just put a little of that in there. You want to give her a little stretch? The boot then goes into the forming machine. Watch this. So when it comes out, you have a nicely formed mock and your shoe and everything's nice and even. Yep, the booty starts to transition to a boot. It's kind of neat to see it all come together. They've been around for a long time for a reason. <laughs> Up next, some of Thoroughgood's fastest hands. James Jimmy Schmitz goes to work on flyways. Pulling the sides up on the shoes and stapling all the way around the heels and the toes. Watch them work. No wrinkles in the leather. They look just right. Now, Becky Bant takes over. This is what I'm trimming off, all this excess above the channeling. She uses a very sharp tool to do the trim. Make sure you keep your fingers below where you're trimming. By now, she's figured it out. 41 years. Yep, 41 years of Thoroughgood and still going. <laughs> nice work, Becky. Once she's done trimming, you can see this is starting to look like a flyaway boot. Sort of. Now the boots move to inseams, the art of attaching a welt. Well, actually, the welt is probably one of the stronger strengths of the shoe. See, what I'm doing is I'm sewing on here and I'm going crossways on this shoe. So you see how strong this is right here? Yep. 33 years into this job, Dwayne Scarehut knows the nuances of both boots and his work. There's three different inseamers here. Each has their own little signature. It's just like a surgeon. Look at his stitch. See that? Well, you'll notice that right here, it's dark. There's actually a reason for it. That box right there, that is actually melted wax that goes onto the thread as he sews. And when that wax cools, it just locks this system together. Kind of a minor detail, but it's important too. Those details add up to the legacy of these boots in this crew. When I get done with this shoe, I've done the best possible job that I'm capable of doing to send it down to the next person and the next person until the shoe's boxed up and then sent out. It is a mentality shared down the line. All of these roles that play together all come out to that final product, and if it's not done just right, it ends up having to be redone over and over again. The point, exact processes, more than 100 of them, help workers get flyways crafted right. 
Suddenly, I find myself thinking about lunch. This next step makes my belly growl. I think I'll call it boot cobbler. Cinnamon apple. I am the bottom filler. Belaney Benz works three jobs into one. Fiberglass and goo. Yes. All right. She then adds a fiberglass shank. This is what gives you support for your arch. And we're just gonna run that on the glue wheel. And you dab, and then you put it down like that. So there's glue both down here and up here. And then we fill it with cork. Yep, a hot concoction of cork and adhesive. <laughs> this mix creates comfort and also a bit of insulation. Just like spreading peanut butter. Okay, time for a break. Stay tuned though, as Thoroughgoods enter a torture chamber. And later... I'll go slow. No, you won't. <laughs> Don't lie to me. One of the most crooked competitions I've ever taken part in. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Spire Credit Union. Moen's Mouse Mix. Polaris Industries. Warner's Dock. Game Fair. Marshfield's Thoroughgood Boot Plant remains a place with a bit of a reputation. For a long time, our tagline we was we're craftsmen of the Northwoods. These shoes are made by hand. Workers complete more than 100 individual steps to get a flyway boot from here to here. With the boot formed, Tracy Dawson starts on the foundation. Boots slide down the line right to it. This is the heat activator. It activates my mids and the, my cement. She then joins the midsole to the boot. This is my press. This is where it gets pressed, where it gets pushed together. So it goes really tight and it flattens out the shoe really good. Now the boots get trimmed. No screwing around for Chris Manigal. He tidies up midsoles at lightning speed. I can slow it down if you want. Like, how do you guys do that? Carefully. <laughs> Too slow. That's actually too slow for day one speed. He's on year 16 speed. Three minutes for 24 shoes. I can only go as fast as the machine lets me. If the machine went faster, I could go faster. The excess piles up pretty quickly. <laughs> but I got this. Thoroughgood, let me do something. It's a small task, but it's very important. Very important. How's it look? Better than it did. Better than it did. Chris now locks the welt and midsole. This is gonna run a stitch through the welt, through the midsole, basically a hold this together. It's called the Goodyear Stitcher because it takes a good year to learn. Now the boots roll next door where Dylan Summerlin works under a most extreme light. He uses a black light to ensure every part of this midsole gets covered. And that step just to make sure basically the glue so that they can attach the sole. Speaking of sole. I'm a sole press operator. The guy with all of it. <laughs> or should I say all the soles. This here is the heat activator that takes the boot and the sole and it raises it to temperature which makes the adhesive sticky. And then you place it together and would put it on the press. Shannon Crone attaches soles to the boots. And then I hit the switch and it's on a timer. And the press itself is on a timer too. Every so many cases they actually do pull tests in the lab and testing to make sure that they ain't gonna come apart. True story. This is fun to watch. <laughs> so what is this thing? So this is the Scott Tensile pull test machine. That's Ben Schubring. He tests boots. And it pulls the boot apart, testing the bond of the cement. His title, quality technician, short for the guy who tries to tear, rip, and pound apart perfectly good boots. I do testing pretty much all day. To make sure thorough goods last. Exactly why Shannon is so exacting back at his soul station. What happens is it seals this off. It goes on the weld, you just kind of roll it, and that pretty much pushes this down against the midsole, against the outer sole to seal it off. 
I wish you'd give me a job. <laughs> Whether it's just laying those on or something. Yeah. No, I'm serious. That side down, right? Yeah, that, yep, just like that. And then okay. that just sets in there like that. Put it on top. And the best part of this process? Yeah, and then just flick that switch. Yeah. We are now cooking with boots. <laughs> I appreciate you letting me help. Not a problem. How am I doing? Awesome. Well, then why'd you take my job from me again? <laughs> Whoops. Uh... I give up. Shannon's too good and too used to his gig. Straight ahead, the boots finally wrap up, and I get beat down by a cardboard box. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Canvas Works, Warner's Dock, L&M Fleet Supply, On the hottest of summer days, we watch workers crank away on Thoroughgood's legacy boots, the flyway designed for life outdoors. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm just trimming up the excess sole. The boot gets another trim and the lasts come out. So, there you go. Looks like we've got a completed boot, right? Not even close, but hang tight. Up next, we're finishing up our flyway. Looks pretty good. I'm taking the excess trimmings off to make it smooth. Caleb Connor shapes and cleans up the new soles. How do you know that's right? Do been doing it for a while. The boots seem complete, but each goes through several sets of discerning eyes. Basically, if there's stuff that some of them guys missed, I take care of it. I'm like one of the final people to look at the boot, inspect the boot before it gets put in a box. Seth Klon touches up any imperfections along with Nancy Smith. She's getting the glue off or wax off. That's about as best as I can get that one. <laughs> looks good to me. Lynn Oliver now looks at the boot's finer details. So there was a little cut there, so you just take a little crayon, cover it right up. Oh. It looks good. Not quite yet. So if the boot gets to this point, it's either perfect or it's in trouble because of her. Sue Manigan, one last set of eyes. I am the final inspector, and I just, I checked everything. Once done. Hi! Miss me already? Lynn Oliver gets them again. Here is where we spray them. These ones get the leather protector. You want to make sure you do an even coat. From there, Stephanie Rhodes laces and tags each set. You notice how she's tying? They do that by design. They don't want to pre-tie the boots because so many people have these individual ways that are their favorites, so they let you decide. It's kind of interesting. Only now can a flyway boot go into the box, and that is the work of someone very special. And you're the boxer, right? <laughs> the boxer. Yep, yep. Uh, not quite like that. More like this. Nancy Copeland has 32 years at Thoroughgood and still counting. Yeah, I'm number 19. So when they open the box, they know who, uh, you know, packed it. Watch for number 19. You'll know Nancy packaged with care. One little boxing joke, and I get escorted over here. Can we borrow your table? Right to Janet Morzuski's desk. All right, what are the rules of this? Don't get paper clads and delete all over the box. <laughs> See, Janet challenged me. There's like a crowd. <laughs> this is the first annual box race. I am about quality, not quantity. Did I mention Janet box boots for 12 years before becoming supervisor? I'll go slow. No, you won't. <laughs> Don't lie to me. What? And box. Come on! Like, why is that so difficult? Because when you don't did... touch. I still can't do it. Oh, sweet. There's another one. There you go. Thanks. 
You're welcome. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Janet's skill, just one more piece of the thoroughgood puzzle. Like every single person in this plant, focused on building perfect flyway boots. They're your friends, they're your family, people in the community that, that show up every day and take a lot of pride in what they do. Especially with that little flag on the side. I mean, it was made right here by our hands, our hard work, our determination to make good quality footwear. This boot, these flyways, proof of American perfection, made for the outdoors right here in Marshfield. So you're not gonna actually video this, are you? And, uh, well, that, that's what the camera's for. But you're not airing it, are you? No. Of course we are. Okay. <laughs>